Hello and welcome to the Young Author Pod and today we'll discuss about the femoroacetabular impingement. The femoroacetabular impingement is a relatively recently described term which implies a subtle abnormality in either or both of the proximal femur and the acetabulum causing interference in the normal hip joint movement. Two basic types of impingement have been described the pincer type and the cam type. I am sure everyone is familiar with what a pincer is. It is a metal tool with blunt concave jaws that are used for gripping and pulling things. And the cam is a projection on rotating part in machinery designed to make sliding contact with another part while rotating. When both the abnormalities are present simultaneously, it is a mixed lesion. In the pincer mechanism, there is either global overcoverage of the femoral head circumferentially as in coxa profunda or protegio or local overcoverage of the femoral head by the anterior part of the acetabular rim if the acetabular opening is retroverted. As a consequence, during the joint motion, a bony ridge or osteophytes abuts against the front of the femoral neck. This results in fatiguing and degeneration of the anterior part of the acetabular labrum along with a small zone of adjacent articular cartilage. There may also be an increased shearing force mostly in the posterior part of the joint during the medial rotation of the hip. In the cam mechanism, the bony thickening at the femoral head neck junction causes jamming of the femoral neck against the front of acetabulum and abrasion or delamination of the acetabular cartilage. The acetabular labrum may degenerate later in the course of the disease. The pattern of cartilage damage differs in these two types. In the cam type, the peripheral anterior superior part of the joint is severely involved and as the disease progresses, it also involves the central portion of the joint. However, in the pincer pathology, the posterior inferior joint cartilage may develop damage rather early. This could represent a counter collision. The patient of femoroacetabular impingement is usually an active young adult, like an athlete or a ballet dancer. Groin pain and limited motion are the usual presenting symptoms, which may be exacerbated by excessive demand on the hip or may present after sitting for a prolonged period. In the anterior impingement test, the affected hip is flexed to 90 degrees and the leg is internally rotated and adapted. If there is abnormal contact between the anterior superior acetabular rim and the femoral neck, pain may be elicited. The posterior impingement may be tested by having the patient dangle their legs off the end of an examination table with the affected leg externally rotated by the examiner and the opposite limb held flexed by the patient. In a positive exam, the femur contacts the posterior acetabular rim eliciting pain. An orthograde anterior posterior radiograph of the pelvis and a lateral radiograph of the hip are needed for the patients with suspected femoroacetabular impingement. In the CAM type, the superolateral head neck junction is convex instead of concave, giving the femoral head an appearance of pistol grip deformity. On an AP X-ray in the normal hip, the anterior wall of the acetabulum is superior to the posterior wall. But in the pincer impingement, the anterior wall appears inferior to the posterior wall, giving a figure of 8 appearance also known as the crossover sign. This indicates acetabular retroversion with anterior overcoverage of the femoral head in the pincer impingement. Alpha angle is measured on a lateral radiograph. A line is drawn connecting the center of the femoral head and the center of femoral neck. A second line is drawn from the center of the femoral head to the point on the anterolateral head neck junction where the prominence begins. The intersection of these two lines forms the alpha angle. The normal value of alpha angle is approximately 42 degrees. An alpha angle of more than 50 to 55 degrees is generally considered consistent with a cam deformity. 
head neck offset ratio is measured from the cross table lateral view with the hip in 10 degrees of internal rotation. A line is drawn through the center of the long axis of the femoral neck. A second line is drawn parallel to the first line through the anterior most aspect of the femoral neck. A third line is drawn parallel to the second line through the anterior most aspect of the femoral head. The head neck offset ratio is calculated by measuring the distance between line 2 and 3 and dividing by the diameter of the femoral head. If the ratio is less than 0.17, a cam deformity is likely present. The beta angle is measured on a beta view. For the beta view, the hip is in 90 degrees of flexion, 20 degrees of abduction and 0 degrees of rotation. The X-ray beam is angled 15 degrees to the anteroposterior direction so that it is tangential to the acetabular plane. The beta angle is measured from the point where the contour of femoral head neck junction departs from the spherical contour of the femoral head to the center of femoral head and then to the superior lateral bony margin of the acetabulum. A beta angle of less than 30 degrees is indicative of impingement morphology including cam, pincer and mix types. The magnetic resonance arthrography is sensitive and specific for detecting labral and chondral lesions. However, there are limitations in detecting undisplaced delaminations of the acetabular cartilage. The treatment includes non-operative and operative options. The benefits of non-surgical treatment such as physical or anti-inflammatory therapy are questionable. Restriction of athletic activities may occasionally reduce the symptoms. Operative arthroscopic procedures are suitable only for minor and localized structural abnormalities. Isolated treatment of labral lesions without correcting the underlying bony pathology is a major cause of failure. Surgical dislocation of the hip is the preferred approach for treating femoroacetabular impingement. The hip joint is approached via cocker lagen back approach or the Gibson's approach. A trochanteric flip osteotomy is performed. The gluteus minimus muscle is dissected carefully and the Z-capsulotomy is performed. The hip joint is then dislocated. The acetabular labrum and the adjacent articular cartilage are assessed and the identified lesions are tested for partial or complete avulsions from the acetabular rim. This procedure allows excellent exposure of the proximal femur and the acetabulum. It permits treatment of severe deformities, preserves femoral head blood supply, allows for repair of soft tissues like labral and chondral tears. Complications are rare but include trochanteric non-union and heterotrophic bone formation. Anterior Z-capsulotomy preserves posterior vessels to the femoral neck and minimizes the risk for osteonecrosis. So this was the basic idea of femoral acetabular impingement. If you like this video then please subscribe to my channel The Young Orthopod on YouTube. Don't forget to like, comment and share the video. For more topics on orthopedics, you can follow my page on Facebook The Young Orthopod and you can also visit my blog Young Orthopod at Blogspot. The links are in the description. Thank you for watching. See you soon.